Alrighty, hello everybody. Um, happy Monday, although I don't think this video is going to be going up on Monday. But it is Monday as I'm filming this. Um, yeah, so today I have a very or a video I've been very excited to do. And that is my complete and total Green Day collection. <clears throat> so Green Day is my favorite band of all time. Um, I got into them just a few years ago, actually. So, um, I haven't really been listening to Green Day for all that long. But over the time I have been listening to them, I absolutely fell in love with their music. And I, uh, can't get enough of it. So, I am a bit of an obsessed Green Day fan. I would say Green Day is the only band that I would be willing to spend <laughs> this much money on. Um, and they're really the only band that I would ever buy from their, like, official store buy like albums and stuff from their official store because I want to support them directly and that's what I did with uh, the Revolution Radio album. <clears throat> so um, I filmed the Green Day Collection video a while ago but it was just CDs and vinyl and I wasn't really thrilled with how that came out because the sound sounded really awful. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe this time I'll do a better quality version and I get to include everything I have um, now there's one quick uh, disclaimer. I did forget one thing. There's one thing that I left at home, and that is um, I have a copy. It's a really small thing. It's a copy of Rolling Stone with uh, Green Day on the cover. Um, and I did have an idea about what I'm going to do with that. Um, so I am going to see Green Day for the very first time live in March. Um, and my plan was to take my ticket stubs and put those in a frame with the cover from Rolling Stone and uh, frame that up and put it on my wall. So, um, I, I really like the cover. I think it looks cool and it'd be something to commemorate my very first Green Day show. So, I am extremely excited to see them live. I've never even been to a rock concert, so this is my first, like, official concert and it's my first Green Day concert, so I'm very excited for that. <laughs> um, but... Without further ado, let's get to the small, I have a couple small little things here. As you see, that's Revolution Radio on vinyl, um, and I'm not going to open that up until the end of this video. Um, so this first thing here is just a wristband that I got in the mail a few days ago. This is from uh, GreenDayAuthority.com. They make these wristbands. Um, they're kind of expensive for just a rubber wristband. Um, you pay five fifty, including shipping. Um, but they support this website, and it's the best Green Day website on the internet, in my opinion. So uh, it has love on one side, and then the black it's a uh, rage. So it's rage and love. Um, which, if you know Green Day, um, in my opinion, their best song that they ever made uh, is "Jesus of Suburbia." And the first line of that is, um, I'm the son of rage and love, the Jesus of suburbia. So, um, rage and love's kind of been a motto that uh, Green Day and the fans have kind of taken up. Um, so that's a really cool wristband that I just got in uh, the mail a few days ago. And then I have a Dookie coffee mug, which is really awesome. It's got... Part of the cover artwork from Dookie. Dookie is my second favorite album. <clears throat> um, and it's very close to the top. Uh, it, it's really hard for me to choose between Dookie and American Idiot. Um, but American Idiot does edge it out because American Idiot was kind of the first album I listened to to get into Green Day. Um, I'd always heard of Green Day. I really can't tell you when I first heard of them. Um, American Idiot was popular when I was in grade school. Uh, and I think I knew of them back then. But I didn't really listen to them. And, uh, I, um, I heard their song, Oh Love, um, when they came out with the trilogy of albums. And that was the first Green Day song I ever put on my iPod, uh, back in 2012. Um, but for some reason, I just never got into Green Day. I really liked that song. 
but I never really got into them. And then one day I was just watching YouTube and I, um, I think I was watching a baseball video and someone put the intro riff to American Idiot and I just heard that and I'm like, I love that. I have to hear more of that. And I googled up American Idiot and I figured out how this, what the song was and I just started listening to the album. Um, so anyway, that's kind of an interesting little story. Um, now we're going to get in the t-shirts. Um, I now have quite a few Green Day t-shirts. I've really built up the collection um, over the past year. Uh, the first one I got, this was the first Green Day t-shirt I ever bought. It's the Dookie t-shirt, and it has um, it has the Green Day logo from the cover, and then it has some other artwork, which is really hilarious. Um, you got, like, dogs smoking weed, and... <laughs> That little cat thing, smoking. Um, you got monkeys throwing their poo. <laughs> Very immature artwork, but it, it's really funny as well. Um, so yeah, I love the artwork off of Dookie. And Dookie, another kind of funny story. When I first heard of Dookie and I started listening to the album, I thought Dookie was kind of like a... Um, a synonym for marijuana, <laughs> which would have been perfect, you know, because there's a lot of songs about smoking pot and, on, on Dookie and a lot of references in the artwork, um, you know, just think of Longview, but um, it's actually a synonym for, for uh, poo or shit, <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I was uh, kind of ignorant to the subject, uh, but I eventually figured out what it was. <laughs> so anyway, um, have it. That's kind of weird having your um, uh, one of your most famous albums and your best-selling album as a band is named after excrement. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Um, the next T-shirt is uh, Uno Dos Tres from their trilogy of albums in 2012 and this is a tour t-shirt so I did not go to the show of course um, but I bought this on eBay it's the 99 revolutions tour and it has all the dates on the back <clears throat> so yeah like I said I just barely had gotten into Green Day then so of course I didn't go to the show then we have one of my new ones it's the Revolution Radio cover artwork. Um, this is from Hot Topic. And for some reason, the orange pops up really bright on this. And it's not quite that bright in real life. Um, but, yeah, it, it does kind of... The cover artwork to this really pops on some releases. Like, it really jumps out on you, the orange. So that's one of my favorites, if not my favorite shirt. It's the most comfortable. Uh, then we have an American Idiot shirt, which I got this one from Target. And I wish I'd have gotten the Hot Topic version, because it Hot Topic has the black one. Um, this one's gray, which doesn't make nearly as much sense. American Idiot cover is black, not gray. Um, but anyway, I love that logo. I obviously love this album. My favorite album. And then the last one here. The last one is just a plain kind of... It looks kind of like a retro logo for Green Day. Um, looks kind of similar to what you'd see on Kerplunk. Um, yeah, it's got that color of green. The logo's different, but... Anyway, I'm going to shut this off here because I want to turn it to a front-facing camera for the second part, which is all of the music, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, um, welcome back to my Green Day collection. This is part two. Um, I don't think I'm going to separate it, though. Uh, it should probably just kind of flow nicely together. Um, I might have to separate part of the music part because there's a lot of music. Um, so this... Uh, we're getting into the music, so I have a nice big stack of CDs here, um, and that's not even all of them. <laughs> Green Day's put out so many 
albums and just releases and singles and everything. I have one single, CD singles, or I don't like to spend too much on them, so a bit harder to find. Um, and then I have some vinyl singles, though, as well. Um, and then, of course, I have the Revolution Radio vinyl copy, which I never did an unboxing for Revolution Radio at all. And I have three versions, so we're going to show those in this video. I'm also going to talk just a tiny bit about each album. Um, and uh, so th that might take a while, so we might have to break this up into two parts, maybe three even. Uh, three might be too much, but let's just get into this. I'll stop rambling. And um, so first off, we're going to start off with the vinyl. I'm going to start with the vinyl first. Can't quite make up my mind. <laughs> so these are all singles. These I have three here. Um, they're the three singles from the album Warning. Um, and these were all put out on Adeline Records. And from what I understand, these are all limited. So they're like, I can't remember what's what, but um, it's like 500 to 1,000 copies, um, supposedly. I don't know if they're still that way or if they were originally that way or what. Um, but this one is Warning. So it's the actual song Warning. And this says on the back just has warning on it but in fact if you look at the vinyl it has more than just warning um, this is uh, orange vinyl as you can see so side uh, side one just has warning on it if you can read it um, and then side two has um, Scumbag and Outsider, which are two songs from Shenanigans, which was released after Warning, so that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> I'm not even going to try to get it back in. These these cases are kind of tight, so they're hard to get the vinyls back in without scratching and everything, so I'm going to save that till after the video and I'll put them back. The next one is Waiting, um, which is one of my favorite songs from the album. Um, it's kind of a different sounding song. Um, this almost kind of reminds me of um, Redundant from Nimrod, which is one of my favorite songs that Green Day's ever put out. Um, and it, it, it's kind of a song that flies under the radar for sure, as is Waiting. They've been playing Waiting at their shows at the um, Revolution Radio Tour. So I really hope they play it whenever I go to see them. Because, uh, again, really love this song. It's not one of their most popular. Um, so it has Waiting and Maria on the B-side. Maria is another great song. Um, yeah, so this one has a hair on it. <laughs> That's not good. All right. So this has an insert with black and white cover art, and then lyric sheet for Maria. So that's interesting, they put the lyrics for the B-side on here, but no lyrics for the actual single itself. <laughs> that's interesting. And this is again a little bit dirty. This hasn't been played much. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well might be able to in that light. It's a transparent purple. So you should be able to kind of see through it. Um, yeah, this looks really cool in person. Um, it might be tough to pick up on this camera. Um, and then the B side with Maria. So, yeah. Um, it's a really nice looking vinyl. You might just have to see it in person though to really um, catch the color. And then we have a song that's definitely my top three Green Day songs, which is Minority. I just love this song. It's just, um, it also has Jackass on it, but actually there's more songs on here that they don't put on the back. I don't know why, again. Um, but yeah, just the message behind this song. It's just like accepting... The fact that you're, you know, you may not fit in society, you may not fit 
um, in with the popular crowd or whatever, and that's okay, and that's actually a good thing that you don't fit in, you know. Um, it's good to, to be unique, to be a minority, um, you know, just, just, just to be different. And that's one thing that I absolutely love about punk music, just in general, the, the messaging is quite similar to that, um, just in general. That's awesome. So, um, this is a marble pink. So, this one's definitely my favorite. There's a little flaw on here, but, and, and I don't know what the deal is with that. It's like a black spot on there. Um, I didn't send it back because it doesn't affect the playback. Um, it plays just fine on the record player, so. Um, don't know what the deal is with that. Um, again, there's a couple hairs on these. These don't get played very often, so they do get dusty. Um, the back has... Um, oh wait, on the front side it's got Minority, the radio version. But it, it's also got um, Brat, the live version of Brat from Insomniac. <coughs> um, and I, I believe, even though it says radio version, I believe um, it's not like edited, so it still has like fuck in it. You know, because it's got the line, like, a free-for-all, fuck them all um, And I don't believe they edited it out, which is awesome. I hate censorship. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, we've decided that some words are not acceptable on radio and stuff. Like, I get it if there's little kids listening to it, but, you know, even then, like, what's wrong with so-called swear words? <laughs> um, I'm not gonna not going to talk about that because that would take up too much time, but anyway, there's the B-sides, which have Jackass and 86. Um, Jackass is from Warning. 86 is from Insomniac, which is, this, that's one of my favorite songs off of that album. Um, so, that's all of the vinyl, for singles, anyway. Um, take them out and do a break. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's all the singles that I have. The only other vinyl is the full link album for Revolution Radio. So let's get into CDs. I'm um, sorry, taking quite a while, as I expected. So this is not actually the first Green Day album. This is 1039 Smooth Out Slappy Hours, which um, this is a compilation. Their first album was technically 39 Smooth, um, but that is really rare to find because when they got signed to a major label, they re-released this and they combined it with two of their EPs. They had Thousand Hours and Slappy, and they um, those each had like four songs on it, three, four songs. They combined all three of those to make 1039 Smoothed Out Slappy Hours. Um, kind of a creative title. Uh, but yeah, 39 Smooth, this is the artwork from 39 Smooth, um, which is really interesting. I have no idea what the messaging is for this artwork. Um, it seems like type of artwork that would have a message to it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it is really cool nonetheless. Um, and again, this is not actually the first Green Day album. It's just a compilation. Um, got the spine there and it has the reprise logo so this is the reprise reissue I believe they reissued this in 2001 and it has 19 songs uh, this actually says 2003 so that must have been when they reissued um, Original album was released in 91, it says. I thought it was 1990, but, um, let's see. So my favorite song on here, I try to kind of do my favorite song on each album. Um, it's really tough. I really like a lot of songs. I think Paper Lanterns, number 11 right there, is maybe perhaps my favorite song um, on this. I really love At the Library. Um, that's a song that really relates to my life. Um, you know, it's just, it's just about, you know, like, going to the library and seeing a girl you find really attractive, um, but you don't have the courage to talk to her. Um, 
and, you know, eventually she walks away with her boyfriend, and, um, it just kind of ends, like, uh, maybe we'll meet again someday, you know, um, and that's kind of <laughs> my romantic life. I, it's non-existent. <laughs> um, it's got, like, 409 and Your Coffee Maker is a great song. Um, yeah, just lots of great ones, even though this is, like, their earliest stuff. It still has got a lot of really good songs, and I think they've been playing a couple off of this on their tour. Going to Pasolacqua. Great song. Is it Pasolacqua or Pasolacqua or something like that? I, I have no idea how to pronounce it, but that is a great song. Yeah. Dry Ice, another really good song, so lots of good ones on here. Um, this case is kind of broken. <laughs> That's the inside of the book right there. And then you've got the disc. The disc is in perfect shape, so there's really no need to worry about the um, uh, case. There's the That's the dog from the slappy cover in there. And then we've got a booklet which is very plain. It does have one little piece of really cool artwork, I think, if I can find it. I don't expect you to be able to read those lyrics. They're really small. Okay, so this is the really cool artwork right here. I love that picture. I'd love to get a poster that looks like that, that's got like the logo and all of the the band like in there but this does have um uh, there's the guys the original guys um it does have john john kiffmeyer right there playing on drums he was the original uh, green day drummer um and then after this album he quit <clears throat> and they uh they got trey cool who has been the drummer ever since um and it really wouldn't be the same band without trey trey makes um, like, it, it would just be different. It would be way too different. Um, I love Trey. <laughs> okay. Next up we have Kerplunk. Um, this is another one of their really early albums. This was originally on Lookout Records. I didn't say that for the first one, but it was as well. Um, this is a reissue from Reprise. Um, yeah, there's the logo, uh, which was their major label, so they went in and re-released these, um, both these albums, but they were originally on an indie label, um, Lookout, which still makes, um, punk records, um, they're based in San Francisco or Oakland, I can't remember which, um, out in California, but, um, yeah, really good album again. Um, I think, I understand that this album is probably better in terms of, like, the quality of the music, you know, the, the lyrics and the, and the, um, you know, just the music behind it, um, but I tend to prefer 1039 Smooth Out Slappy Hours. I don't listen to these albums very often, either one of these, um, every once in a while, just because it is early stuff, it's not as good, um. But I would say this is probably a better album, but I well, prefer the original or the other one out of these two. Um, despite that, this is a great album. It has some really nice songs. Um, 2000 Light Years Away is great. Uh, who wrote Holden Caulfield? And One of My Lies, Dominated Love Slave. Um, lots of good songs. Artwork is extremely plain in this. And it just, this is basically the same, so I'm just gonna skip. Um, that's like a letter written by one of the super fans. But yeah, it's just the same thing, just the lyrics, plain black and white. So. Skip that for. Um, for sake of time. 
Okay, then we have my second favorite album ever, which is Dookie. Um, it, it's extremely hard for me to choose between Dookie and American Idiot. I love them both for different reasons. I love Dookie because it's more classic pop punk, um, which is what I tend to gravitate towards more, whereas American Idiot is kind of, when they start experimenting with like alternative rock, I'd say they're more of an alt-rock band by the time they get to American Idiot. Um, they still definitely are a punk band. Um, I'd say first and foremost they were always punk rock. Because even Dookie is a little bit heavier than a lot of the pop punk um, artists. But you know, I'd say Dookie, released in 1994, kind of started the mainstream uh, gravitation for pop punk music. Um, which really, I'd say, probably hit its peak in the late 90s, early 2000s. And it's my favorite genre of music. Um, and I'd say Dookie really kind of started it all. Uh, and for that reason, it's one of my favorites. Um, but I just can't put it ahead of American Idiot, because American Idiot just means more to me as an album than Dookie does. Um, even though, I, again, I absolutely love every second of it. So, there are the track listing. And this has Ernie on the back from Sesame Street. Um, and the original pressings of this um, on CD, and I think vinyl too, they had Ernie on the back. But then they took him down um, because they thought they were going to get sued, I think was the, was the main reason. Um, so, it's really cool to have a copy that has Ernie on the back, so you know this was one of the early pressings of this. Um, I just looked to see if it had a date. It says 94. Um, and that's the only date I see on here, so maybe this was an original from 94. I don't know. Um, I'd say I got pretty lucky if I got an original from 94. But um, this could be an early re-release perhaps so it's got some dirt on it on the back there you can see it's starting to get a little bit of you can't really see it but it's starting to get a little scratched just because it's been played so many times um, so there's the disc there's nothing in the back it's plain just like it was on Kerplunk except it's brown instead of black and they finally put some nice artwork in the booklets for this one um, so Burnout is one of my favorite songs um, Having a Blast so, so I think the first half of this album just my opinion the first half is better than the second half after you kind of get past uh, I'd say She after you get past She I start not liking it quite as well um, still love it of course but so, there's Chump, which is one of my favorite songs. Such a good song, Chump. Um, Longview, uh, which is just awesome. That was the first single, the first um, big single that Green Day put out on this. Welcome to Paradise, such a good song, which is originally on Plunk, but they did a, a higher quality recording of this. Um, Pulling Teeth is a funny song. Um, Kind of almost has a western type vibe to it. Got Basket Case, which is my second favorite Green Day song. I know that's cliche, everybody knows Basket Case, but it's one of their best for a reason. You know, it's it's absolutely awesome song. Um, she, another incredible song. <laughs> I mean, um, it's kind of written from a perspective of a woman. Um, uh, Billy Joe wrote it for one of his girlfriends at the time, um, not Adrian, which it ended up being his wife, but another girlfriend, um, and it's just an incredible song. And then it kind of, kind of tapers off for me. I still really love these songs, like Anemia Sleepus, um, Sassafras Roots, which is right here. But these songs sound a little bit more generic, I guess, for me. Um, I don't like them nearly as well as the first half. I think the first half of the album is 
the best I've ever heard. And then you've got the last two in the end in FOD. Um, which, again, really good. Um, but I, I just think the first half stands out a little bit more than the, than the rest. So um, let's do one more here, and then I'm going to cut it off for a second part. So we have Insomniac from 1995. Um, when I first got this, okay, this was one of the first three Green Day albums I bought. When I first got this, I didn't like it. I didn't. It's it's harder. It's harder rock. It's more aggressive. It's closer to what I would call like actual punk, hardcore punk. Um, even though it's not, you know, it's still kind of poppy. Um, but it is really aggressive. It's got really dark lyrics in some cases. Um, and for that case, for that reason, I think I didn't like it as well as I did with Dookie. And uh, Warning was the other album that I picked up originally. Um, but the more I listen to this, the more I love it. It, it is quickly climbing up the, um, the ranks for one of my favorite Green Day albums. I put it in the top half of their albums. Um, just because it's just so hard for me to choose. Um, again, love the artwork for this. disc artwork is incredible really cool and the album's called Insomniac and of course there are songs about insomnia on here which is something I've kind of dealt with in my life um, I've uh, I wouldn't say I've had like actual insomnia but I have had struggles sleeping before and um, so I do kind of relate to the lyrics a little bit I don't relate to lyrics about like drug use and everything um, but as far as some of the lyrics about, you know, I can't sleep, and uh, Brain Stew is a great song on there that relates perfectly to that. So this thing folds out. It's one big poster, which is awesome. Um, all kinds of uh, references and you know, kind of, like, dark, t uh, tone in this, um, mural type thing here, um, and I believe they took sections of this and made it the covers for some of their singles for this album, and the lyrics are all on the back, they're impossible to read, they're even hard to read when you get them up close, um, but that's where all the lyrics are, um, yeah, some great songs on this. Um, if I can get this back in, I want to take a look and see which songs I'd say are my favorite. Um, I know I already talked about 86. That's one of my favorite songs. Um, kind of just about the rejection that Green Day felt after they kind of became big. Um, Panic Song is awesome. Um, about, about Billy and Mike's panic attacks. Uh, brain Stew, like I said, Jaded follows right up to Brain Stew. They kind of meld together. They made them um, together for a single. Armitage Shanks kicks this thing off. Um, Hard-hitting track. Um, Stuck With Me is pretty good. Uh, yeah, Babs Uvula Who, great song. This thing has 14 songs on it. It's less than 40 minutes, so this thing goes quickly. Um... So, great album. Um, next up is going to be my third favorite Green Day album. And that's going to be in the next part of this video. So I'm going to cut this off and start filming a second part. So I will see you in part two. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.